I'm Cody Mobley, the site manager here at Fort McAvoy State Historic Site. Uh, Fort McAvoy is one of the Texas Historical Commission sites, and we are the best preserved uh, Indian Wars fort in Texas. And what I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to be talking a little bit about the history of the site and of the fort, and then we're going to go on a short tour of the site. So, Fort McAvoy was one of the 22 posts constructed in Texas by the United States military following the War with Mexico. In 1849, uh, Captain H.C. Whitting was sent on a patrol or a scout from Fort Crowen near Burnett to El Paso to look for a northern route for the Immigrants Road. Um, shortly thereafter, gold was found in California and that road was heavily trafficked. But the initial purpose of the road was for the conveyance of military supplies from the San Antonio Arsenal to the troops at Fort Bliss in El Paso and on into New Mexico if necessary. Fort McCabot was founded in March 14, 1852 by five companies of the 8th Infantry. Um, from 1852 to, uh, to, or from March 1852 through June of 1852, we're actually located about a mile down, down the road to the west on the headwaters of the San Saba River. The initial construction of the post was halted due to the water source that they were constructing there. Uh, it was a stagnant lagoon and malarial uh, fever was, was becoming rampant amongst the troops. So in June of 1852, they moved here on top of the hill, and the first two um, construction projects that they took on was the lime kiln and the bakery. The lime kiln, of course, was for the mortar and whitewash uh, quick lime that the post needed for the construction of buildings, and of course the bakeries for the substance of the troops. Uh, from 1852 through 18 54, we had the 8th Infantry here uh, under Colonel Staniford initially, and then when he passed away, he was taken over by uh, Sprague. In 1850, late 1853, the Second Dragoons began coming in under Captain May, who was a, a hero of the war with Mexico. And under the 8th Infantry and the Second Dragoons, the construction of the post, uh, the, the first phase, really uh, took hold. The, Second Dragoons when they were out here, uh, even though they did go on mounted patrols, uh, their primary function was to serve as uh, guards or escorts for the wagons coming up from San Antonio and also to uh, scout uh, future roads uh, heading west. Uh, in 1855, the 1st Infantry were transferred into the post and um, the 1st Infantry they served as, a, um, as escorts again. Uh, two companies of the first were mounted so they could go on mounted patrols. But uh, as you notice, the primary role of the antebellum army in Texas was that of basically a police force. They weren't going out and engaging the uh, American Indians in the area, um, which at that point were here around Fort McCabot. They were the, the bands of Comanches under uh, Lone Wolf, which were up on the Concho and then the Lap and Apache and the Kickapoo, which were uh, on the migratory pass in New Mexico, just west of here. In 1859, the post was ordered to be abandoned, and the troops were transferred out to Fort McIntosh and Camp Cooper. And from 1859 through uh, September of 1861, it was largely abandoned. The owners, landowners of the post, or the, the grounds that the fort was built upon, were the Robinson family at that time, and they, moved into the commanding officer's quarters where they resided until it was reoccupied in 1868. The Civil War years here at Fort McCabot were largely uneventful. Uh, from September 1861 through April of 1862, we served as a temporary prisoner of war camp for the Federals. Served at the Battle of Adams Hill. We had 50 of them transferred here. Uh, Company E of the 1st Texas Mountain Rifles were stationed here during that period. After April of 1862, uh, the 1st Texas Mountain Rifles were disbanded and we were largely abandoned uh, and the frontier line moved further east to the, uh, to the 1849 line of defense. In uh, 1864 and 1865, we had elements of the 31st uh, Brigade of Texas State Troops that maneuvered through here, uh, mostly just on patrols, um, and they were pretty sporadic in their, their visitation. The last elements of the Texas State Troops were here in May of 1865, which at that point they still had not heard that the war was over. In 1866, the post was um, 
was revisited by the Federal Army for a short period following the, uh, the Great Raid of 1866 that occurred in this area. Um, bands of, of Indians came from North Texas, uh, largely Comanche, and they made off about 5,000 head of horses. At that point, uh, the Federal Ar Occupation Army of Texas during the Reconstruction was visiting near Fort Mason and scouting uh, future locations for the posts, but they did pursue the Indians because their primary purpose was to look for uh, points of reoccupation following the Civil War. In 1868, we were once again uh, reoccupied by the Federal Military Army. We were, we had, initially it was Beaumont's uh, company of the 4th Cab, and then his later followed by several other companies. Uh, Captain Beaumont was in charge initially of the reconstruction of the post in 1868. When they came back, uh, most of the buildings were in disrepair due to the poor quality of mortar and soldier construction. Um, even though the soldiers had masons that came up from Fredericksburg during the antebellum period to, to help them construct the, the buildings, they weren't masons by trade, so the quality of the work was pretty poor. Um, along with the 4th Cavalry, we had the 38th and the 41st Infantry under McKenzie that came in to help with the construction. And this primary uh, period of reconstruction was from 1868 to about 1872. Following 72, uh, most of the major projects were redone or finished, and only uh, uh, additional buildings were, were built sporadically from then until 1878. Um, it was McKenzie's. Uh, 38th Infantry that was combined with the 41st to become the 24th, which is one of the Buffalo Soldier Regiments. And we're the, the birthplace of the, the, the 24th Infantry, the Buffalo Soldiers. Uh, during the same period from 1868 to 1872, uh, we had elements of all four regiments of the Buffalo Soldiers stationed here, or headquartered here at Fort McCavitt, which would have been the 24th, 25th Infantry, 9th and 10th Cavalry. Uh, following 72, the 10th Infantry uh, came in, and they were here for the longest period of time during the, the fort's history. Uh, they were here from 1872 through 1879, and one company of the 10th Infantry, Company I, they were the most active military company in Texas during the Indian Wars. Um, during the Red River War in 1874, they walked all the way up to Paldera Canyon, acting as guard for the transport wagons. Um, their uh, they were tasked with, with killing the Indian ponies captured, and uh, with that, that act, they pretty much ended the Indian Wars in Texas, taking away the, uh, the Comanche Indians and the Quahatis and, and um, Quantum Parker's allies, took away their, their uh, boat of transportation. Following that, they spent the majority of the time walking from Fort Stockton to Austin and other posts in between acting as escorts for guards, uh, court marshals, and, and things of that nature. Following the, uh, the, the Red River War and Panhandle, the Indian Wars in Texas were pretty much over. And from that point on, uh, Fort McCabot primarily acted as a uh, distribution depot for the San Antonio Quartermaster Arsenal. And what that means is any of the wagons that came up the military road to Fort McCabot, they would offload supplies into our storehouses, and we would resupply the posts north and west of here. Basically, we would act as a, a warehouse facility for the, uh, for the United States Army. The post was closed, ordered to be closed in 1882, but due to the amount of, of material here at the post, we, it was extended until June 30th, 1883. Um, and once again, the the 1st Infantry came back and were one of the last companies to, to leave the post. One of the reasons Fort McCabot was abandoned was the United States Army started using railways to transport their goods across the state and with the, the use of the rail, railroads they were able to ship the goods faster and cheaper and therefore they would be able, would be able to cut down on waste and any of the, uh, the food stuffs that they were shipping. Um, following the, the closure of the post in 1883 um, the absentee landowners who at that time were residing in New York, they held an auction to auction off all the buildings from the post and within hours the, of the army lowering the flag, Fort, the town of Fort McCabot was born and shortly thereafter they absorbed Scabtown, which uh, was previously named Lanesburg, 
uh, just right next to the river. They absorbed most of the citizens of that and became the town of Fort McCavitt. Uh, from 1883 to 1974, the town existed here on the grounds. And in 1974, the last three structures were purchased from private citizen, and we finally became a, a state historic or state historical park under Texas Parks and Wildlife. Uh, the first three structures were donated to the site in 1968, and from 1968 to 1974, the, the state slowly purchased the rest of the structures. But 